Okay, this is problem uh, 5-76. It is on page 307. And during the break, I went ahead and drew it. Um, we'll start by calculating reactions. There will be reactions at the wall on the beam. The reaction uh, at A is 1.8 kilonewtons per meter multiplied by 3.5 meters worth plus the area of this triangle down here, which is 1.8 kilonewtons per meter multiplied by another 1.2 meters, but it's a triangle, so we have to divide by two. That comes out to 7.38 kilonewtons. So there's the total force, the total reaction force at the wall. Let me just erase it here and write it down 7.38 since we know the magnitude now. And we'll just write kilonewtons there. Okay. For the moments, summing moments about A, taking counterclockwise is positive, we should get a zero total. And so that would be the moment from the wall, which I called the moment at A, notice it's a positive moment, okay. minus the moments due to this rectangular section and the triangular section. So that would be 1.8 kilonewtons per meter multiplied by, again, three and a half meters worth multiplied by the moment arm. Well, where is the moment arm of that resultant that I've computed? It's at the middle of that three and a half meter distance, right? So that's one and three quarter meters. Of distance. So here's the moment arm. There's the resultant, okay, of that rectangular area. There's also a resultant of this triangular area. That resultant would be 1.8 kilonewtons per meter multiplied by, it's going to look just like this, 1.2 meters divided by 2, there's the resultant. Where is it located? Well, it's one-third of the way into this 1.2 meter distance, right? But we also have to, have to add on that 3.5 meter length. So I just wrote it this way, 3.5 meters plus 1.2 uh, multiplied by one-third, and these are all meters, okay? Anyway, calculating the moment at A from this, I found that the moment was 15.237 uh, kilonewton meters. So there's the moment at A. Let me just write it down here. So 15.237 kilonewton meters. So there's the moment from the wall onto the beam and the reaction force from the wall onto the beam. All right, are we okay with all of this? Okay, so now for the shear diagram. The shear will be, of course, in kilonewtons. And that should be enough there. The shear has to begin at 7.38 kilonewtons because that's the reaction at the wall. But as this distributed load is applied, that shear is going to move down linearly until we get to this point where the diagram changes. Now if you figure out this area, 1.8 kilonewtons per meter times 3.5 meters, then that tells you the change in the shear. Well, when I did that, I got that the shear would end up at 1.08 kilonewtons worth of shear. Anyone agree with that? Please type in your calculator make sure I'm being honest here. I already made two mistakes on two different problems, so you better check me. <laughs> so 1.8 times 3.5 from 7.38. All right? Okay, good. I see a couple of people saying yes. All right, what about this next segment? What will it look like? Well, of course, we hope that it comes back down to the axis, right? Because if it does, then we haven't made a mistake. We know there's no shear out at the end. And so uh, we, we need to figure out what that would look like. Well, uh, I should have made this come down a little farther. Let me modify my <coughs> picture here. There we go. As it comes out, we're, we're adding less and less areas to move down, down out. So the change. Uh, becomes less and less, and so I would expect this to be concave down. 
because the chain should be quicker at the beginning than it is at the end. Now, of course, these two should be tangent to each other, but I'm not good at drawing that. How do I know they're tangent? Well, because on the triangle and on the straight segment, this point is 1.8 kilonewtons per meter. So, yes, would it be concave up or down? Uh, I would expect it. I say it would be concave down. Let's see, because initially the, I would expect a larger change in this segment, right, and very little change over here. Does that make sense? Yeah, it looks like you drew it concave up. Because <laughs> it should be concave up. I did draw it concave up, right? I'm thinking up. I got my up and down reversed. <laughs> nice. Did I write it that way? Yeah, I wrote it. I even wrote a concave down on my sheet. <laughs> Got another problem. Okay, but that does make sense, right? That it would be. It's like this. How's that? Hey, forget the words. We're engineers. Let's use. <laughs> let's use hand motions. <laughs> you know, it's funny. When you're with friends or your significant other or whoever, what you find after you get out of here is engineers are actually fairly rare. Now, you might work for a company where there's several of you, but you, in the general public, there's we're not a very high concentration of the population. So you find another, you know, friends or someone that, that's also usually single, one person engineer, and you're at some polite dinner or party or something, you're talking to them, and all of a sudden the people you're with say, what are you guys talking about? It sounds like you're speaking a different language. We don't understand. <laughs> that will happen. Okay, so anyway, yeah, like that. So let's see, that's what we expect is concave up. I gotta fix that on my solution here. Of that. And then what do we expect? Well, for the moment, well, for, for one thing, we want to make sure this comes back to zero, right? So we better add up this area. So if you take 1.2 multiplied by 1.8 over 2 to get that area, you should get 1.08 so that we come back down to the, the axis. Does that work? <coughs> okay, I see a few people saying yes. Right. So we did end up back at the, the axis at the end. So that's good. Now for the moment diagram, and then we'll, we'll do a little more work on this because so far what we've got is really not enough. So the moment in kilonewton meters, well, let's see, it has to begin with a moment of 15.237, but it's going to be negative, right? Because again, if you look at a beginning segment of that beam right here, just this little bit here, there's a moment on this side of 15.237, and so you have to apply a moment in this direction to counteract it, right? And that's a negative moment by our sign convention. Okay. So we would end up at, or begin at negative 15.237 kilonewton meters of moment. Now, all we have to do is add up area to move along on the moment diagram. When you do that, you'll end up with a second order curve, something like this, when you get here. So that's second order, and this one is concave down, I think. <laughs> you can correct me if I'm wrong. But that is second order. In other words, we expect the equation that describes this to have an x squared term in it, okay, and it is concave down. And then we're going to add area, and again, the, this area here, as we add it, uh, there's more being added here and less here, and so we expect something like this, and we hope it comes back to the, the axis, of course, right? So we also expect concave down, but this would be third order, because this curve is already second order. Does that make sense? So we expect a third order concave down. But notice we haven't even verified that this would come back to zero, right? We need to first of all calculate this point and then somehow integrate this curve. Uh, also we need the equation for the second order curve because when I give you a problem like this I expect you to solve all of it. Okay? I expect you to be able to tell me the moment and share at any point along the curve. You can't do that unless you have an equation for these things. Okay, so let's see. If you take this area Take uh, 1.08, which is the value of that point right there. Let's get it out of there. And add it to 7.38, divide by 2, and then multiply by 3.5. That should give us this area. So how much area is that, please? 14.805. 14.805. 
Okay, so take 15.237 from 14.805, you say? Yes. Okay, and what do you get? I got negative 0.432. <coughs> yeah. So, so there we go. Good. So we're being consistent. We've got the same result. So we know where this point is, but we don't know the equation of this curve or this curve or even this curve or this curve yet. We better go get those. Okay. So what do you suggest that I do in order to come up with the equations uh, for these things? Well, first thing I would like to do is verify that we end up back at zero. So what I'd like to do is use any knowledge I can here to find out how much area is beneath this curve so I can figure out if that change is correct. So let's start there just to verify that everything we've done so far is correct. Once we do that, then we'll go and get all the equations. Okay. All right, so between the three and a half and 4.7 meter segment, so basically on this part over here, because this is three and a half, and three and a half plus 1.2 is 4.7, in that segment, the load W is equal to 1.8 kilonewtons per meter divided by 1.2 meters times X minus 1.8 kilonewtons per meter divided by 1.2 meters multiplied by 4.7 meters. Wait a second, where the heck did all this come from? Well, I had to come up with an equation that would describe this distributed load. Remember this distributed load is acting downward, so I expect to get something negative from it, right? And when x is equal to 3.5, I should get a distributed load of 1.8 going down, so negative. When x is 4.7, I should get 0. So let's find out. Well, if x is 4.7, sure enough, I would get 0 from this. When x is 3.5, you can look at this and Let's see, what would you get? Well, you'd get 1.2, right? Would be the difference between these two. So 1.2 divided by 1.2 would just give you 1.8. Now, let's make sure it would be negative. Let's see, let's factor it out. So uh, 1.8 over 1.2, <coughs> dropping the units for now, times x minus 4.7. Yeah, if I plug in x equals 3.5, then do you see how I would get uh, negative 1.8, and it would be kilonewtons per meter. Yes. That top line, can you go over that again, where you got, what you have up there? How did I figure it out? Well, I started off by trying to come up with this slope. Okay. And the slope is just 1.8 over 1.2. And initially, I was thinking it needed to be a negative slope, because it's going like this. And as I started playing around with it, I realized, well, wait a second. This, in fact, I had the opposite signs on this initially. And so, uh, what I realized is, well, wait a second, uh, the load's acting down, so I need a negative. It ended up flipping the signs on both my constant term and my slope term. That makes sense. So it's just a y equals mx plus, plus b type of thing. Okay. But I just figured it out based on, you know, slope and getting everything to end up where it should. I knew I needed a zero here, so I added whatever I needed to make that happen that made sense. And then what's the 4.7 at the end? That's where I factored out the x and the 4.7, because this is a common term. I just moved it out to, make, right. to show you how to check and make sure it works. Okay. So it's just a matter of figuring out the equation of that line. And it's more important that you, you realize you need a linear line and that you get the right values, that you get negative 1.8 here and 0 here. Okay. Good question. Any others? So I didn't use a point slope formula or anything like that. I suppose you could. I don't have those memorized, so I just figured it out. The key is, for me, is always figuring out, okay, first of all, what's the slope? Once I figure out the slope, I can usually put it together where it works out. Okay? All right, so there's our equation for the distributed load in this segment. Okay, so what's next? Well, I'd like to get the equation of the shear here because then I can get the equation of the moment. So let's do that. The shear is the integral of the distributed load over the length. Now, here's something that I almost messed up on. I got 
farther down into this problem, and I was thinking for some reason that this equation would apply along the entire length, but it doesn't. This equation only applies from x equals 3.5 to x equals 4.7. Okay, So we'll have different equations, which makes sense in these other segments. Of course, here it's just a linear equation. That's why we get something second order here. Anyway, let's go ahead and integrate this. So let's see. This is just a constant times x. So let me make this a little more simple and drop the units. 1.8 over 1.2 x squared over 2, once we integrate that term. Minus, well, this is just a constant, right? 1.8 over 1.2 times 4.7, but we're going to have an x after it because it has to be integrated as well, plus some constant of integration. Okay? So now what? Well, we need to figure out what that constant is. So basically, if this is the shear, I need to make sure it works. We need to get a shear of 0 at x equals 4.7. So what I did is I plugged in, uh, I said, well, uh, V of x evaluated at x equals 4.7 equals something plus c. And then that was easy to figure out what c should be because I knew that the shear should be 0 at x equals 4.7. Right? So that's how I figured out the value of c. So it's just, it's just simple algebra at that point. So c1 is, do you guys need more detail than this or is this okay? I don't see any requests for more details. So C1 came out to 16.5675 kilonewtons. Okay. And that gave me my full equation for the shear as a function of position along the beam. And so let me just erase C1 and write it in because I need the space. 16.5675. And then what I did is I said, okay, no problem. Now I want the moment, which is the integral of the shear. Okay, so help me out here. What would I get with this first one? If I integrate that term, what would I end up with? By the way, what is 1.8 over 1.2? 1.8 over 1.5, that's right. So let's put in 1.5 rather than writing that over and over. When you integrate x squared over 2, what do you get? This is where you might get confused because you might be thinking derivative and thinking, okay, how does that go? When do I write the exponent beneath it? Well, you write the <coughs> exponent beneath when you've integrated. Okay. So if we if we integrate this again, just if it confuses you, just put the half out by itself, and the integral of x squared is just x cubed over three. Okay. When you integrate, you increase the order. The equations like this. Uh, the integral of x to the n dx is equal to uh, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, as long as n is not equal to negative 1. When n is equal to negative 1, what do you get? 1 over x dx is the same thing as x to neg negative 1 dx. What do you get? You get a natural logarithm, but that's not something for this class, so we'll worry about it later. That's something for thermal. So just stick that in your memory banks. So anyway, you might want to write this equation down in case you've forgotten it, uh, because that's from calculus and that's something we're going to do quite a bit here. Okay. All right, anyway, so that takes care of the first term minus, let's see, 1 and a half times 4.7. Okay, that's just this term, x squared over 2, all right? Now, what about this last term, 16.5675? What should I write after it? Well, let's find out. This term is a constant, and so it's like x to the 0, right? So wouldn't that be x to the first over 1, which is just x? Right? So I just write an x there. <coughs> now, this is an indefinite integral, so I, I know I'm off the video. I'll break the line. So I need another constant. Can I erase this? All right. Well, now we need to solve for this constant C2. And how would we do that? How would you do that if you had to do this? What would you do? Change majors, right? Wrong answer. You're in the right major. <laughs> how would you solve for C2? Well, you just look at the boundary conditions. 
at x equal to 0, we know we better get this value of the moment. Well, wait a second, that won't work. That's what I thought initially, right? This curve only applies from 3.5 to 4.7. So what you have to do is say, well, at x equal to 4.7, and actually plug 4.7 in this, C2 should make it so that the moment is 0, right? Now you can't guarantee that, right? Remember, we, we said we're trying to prove it. We're trying to prove that this comes back to 0, but that's not really fair. So here's another way you could do it. You could say at x equals 3.5, so plug 3.5 into there, C2 should be such that I get a moment of negative 0.432. Okay? And then you could check the other end. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You could go for this one and then check that one, or go for this one and check that one. I, uh, what did I do? I went for this one, assuming that it would end up being zero, and then I checked this point. I got negative, form, uh, negative point four three two, so I knew that everything was okay. Anyway, so C2, I came out with a negative 25.95575. Now, if you're curious, C2 does have units. It would have the same units of all these other terms, but what are the units? Well, this has units of kilonewtons, so this is kilonewtons times meters, so this better be kilonewton meters, right? So the units are kilonewton meters. Okay, so there's our full equation for the moment, and uh, let me just write minus. 5.95575. So now we've got our, our moment equation as a function of x. And uh, sure enough, it's third order. That's what we expected. This concave up is second order, which is what we expected. And so uh, I'll leave it to you to plug in. In fact, why don't you do this? Why don't you plug in x equals 3.5 into this equation and see if you come up with negative. watching the video you should try this as well. Don't be at home and be lazy and not do it. I give you guys these exercises because I think it's helpful to keep you involved in what we're saying and you're not just sitting there passively. Also, it's important that you be able to actually do this. And the key, in my opinion, going through the motions of doing this on your calculator is actually good practice. We're used to doing it in class and so it's not such a big deal when you have to do it on homework but especially on an exam. But if you've already done others, I don't blame you for not doing it. It's up to you. So what numbers are we getting? We evaluate the moment. Here's another way of writing it. X equal 3.5. Should be zero. No, it should be negative 0 0.432 because we're calculating this. Point. I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. <laughs> so I'm having you guys do this because you probably need to work with your calculators a little more. But I'm pretty sure it comes out to negative 0 0.432. Let me double check. let you in on a secret, I uh, made several mistakes before I got to this point. So. My worst mistake was that I copied down this moment as negative 15.273 instead of 37. So I was off by 0 0.036 and I thought, where the heck is this coming from? It can't be around off. Finally found it. Anyone verify my number? 
we got negative? Okay. Negative point four three two. Right. So that is right. So that works out. Now that's not all, right? <coughs> with the cat in the hat. That's not all. No, that's not all. <laughs> that's not all they can do. What else can we do? Well, we need to talk about this section of the curve also, right? We haven't actually put anything around that. We haven't solved that part. So let's do that now. So now let's work on the section from zero to three and a half meters. Now this segment is a little easier. Why? Because the shear is pretty easy to just read off, right? Since the distributed load is constant, the shear is just a straight line. So that's easy. It's negative 7.38 less 1.08 divided by three and a half times x. Where did I get this from? I just noticed the slope is negative. So I took the top minus the bottom to get the y change over the x-change of three and a half, so that's the slope, and then added to it uh, 7.38, because I knew at x equals zero, the shear should end up at 7.38. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's how I got that equation. And then I just had to integrate it, because the moment is still the integral of the shear. And so help me out here. What should I end up with? How should I do this? Why don't you tell me this ratio, 1.38 less 1.08 over 3.5. How much is that? I'm afraid you don't know how to use your calculator after that last one. 1.8, good. So it's a negative 1.8, and this x, how would I integrate that? The integral of x dx is x squared over 2. Okay. For the next term, 7.38 what? x, right, exactly. Yeah. Plus some constant of integration. Okay? So to figure out the constant of integration, what should I do? Well, now I'm in this section. Okay? I could plug in x equals 0, that's here, and when I do that, I would find the moment, which needs to be 15.237 equals basically 0 plus 0 plus c, right? These two terms are going to go away because x is 0. So c is simply negative 15.237. Now let's make sure this works. Let's evaluate the moment at x equal 3 and a half. Let's do it again, because at x equal 3 and a half, we should still get negative 0.432. So plug that into your calculator. Remember there's a negative sign here. There's one here as well. This is a 7 on the end. Make sure that all this works out. Okay, I see a couple people saying yes. All right. So do you see how we've solved the whole problem? We have an equation for this segment, for this segment, for this segment, and for this segment. They're different equations, but we do have equations to completely describe all of those segments. We know the general shape of everything. We know the end points. We know where things change. So we're done with the problem. Questions?